Here we're going to look at an application of integrals of differential m forms on Rn to understand u substitution from calculus 1 a little bit more deeply. So let's recall a couple of terms first. So if we've got a differential m form on Rn, earlier we showed that it could be written in the following way. So we've got omega is the sum over this multi-index i. So this i is this tuple i1 to im where the, that is strictly increasing then we have f sub i dx i and then phi is a parameterization of an m dimensional hypersurface in rn so here we've got it's going from d to rn d is a subset of rm it needs to be one to one and smooth and its image is s so I've drawn a picture of it here. So this is just going from R3 to R3, but you can imagine this should really be an arbitrary RM and this should be an arbitrary RN, but that's hard to draw on the board. So we've got this region over here D, which is being mapped over here to this region over here S. So an M-dimensional hypersurface in RN. Okay, and finally, evaluating the integral of the differential M form omega over the hypersurface S is equivalent to evaluating the m fold integral over d of omega after it's been evaluated in its two step process. First, it's evaluated at a point on that hypersurface, and then it's evaluated at a bunch of tangent vectors to that hypersurface. So here we've got phi of u1 up to um, so that's gonna be a point on the hypersurface. And now we have partial phi with respect to u1 all the way up to partial phi with respect to um. So all those are going to be tangent to the hypersurface. So I'll let you guys look at my previous videos on integrals of differential m forms to see what we mean if you haven't checked those out yet. And then I want to finally recall that this elementary m form is defined in the following way. So we have dx i1 wedge all the way up to dx i m evaluated at v upper one up to v upper m where those are n dimensional vectors that's given by the determinant of an m by m matrix whose rows are defined by each of these vectors and the entries from those vectors are determined by these subscripts here so notice the first row is given by this first vector and then the i1 entry the i2 entry all the way up to the i m entry and then so on and so forth so like I said, we want to apply this notion of an integral of a differential m form to understand u substitution a little bit more deeply. So let's start with an example, then we'll do it a little bit more in general, and then we'll look at another more interesting example. So let's say we want to integrate this differential one form on R1. So it's omega, which is x squared dx, and it's going to be over this one dimensional hypersurface in R1, in other words, this interval 0, 0,5. And we're going to look at this parameterized two different ways. And we should get the same answer regardless of the parameterization. Because what's important over here is this M form is being integrated over this surface S. We get to pick the parameterization. So let's first look at this trivial parameterization. Phi of t equals t, and t runs from 0 to 5. So what's going on here is we've got this copy of the domain R1, and we have this interval between 0 and 5 in the domain. And then we have a copy of the codomain, which is also R1, and we've got the same interval over here, 0 to 5. And then our function phi is mapping just trivially from one interval to the other interval. Okay, and now let's go ahead and use this formula carefully. So notice we could say the integral over our surface, but our surface is the interval 0, 5 of omega. So that's going to be the same thing as the integral from 0 to 5 of omega evaluated at phi of t, and then furthermore evaluated at phi prime of t. Great. So now let's break that down. That's going to be the integral from 0 to 5 of, so omega evaluated at phi of t. That means everywhere we see an x in omega, we're going to plug in phi of t, but that's just t, so we'll just have t squared. And then we have dx, which is the elementary differential one form on R1, and that's evaluating at the derivative of phi of t. But notice the derivative of this is just one. Great, and then we have dt. 
So, but notice that what this is telling us to do is to take the determinant of a one by one matrix given by the entry from this vector. So that's a really, really simple case of what's happening right here. So obviously the determinant of a one by one matrix is just the number itself. So here we have the integral from zero to five of t squared dt. And I'll stop right there. We won't evaluate this integral because the important part is what's happening via the two parameterizations, not the actual number in the end. Okay, so now let's do it with this other parameterization. So here what's going on is we have our domain is the interval one to two. And we have our parameterization psi in this case is mapping the interval one to two onto the interval zero to five. And this is the parameterization we'll use to evaluate the integral of this differential one form over zero five. So let's see how this is gonna boil down. So again, we have the same kind of thing. We're integrating over zero five. That's like our one dimensional hypersurface in R1 of omega. But now we're using our parameterization psi. So that's going to be equal to the integral from one to two because that's how we're parameterizing this. And now we have omega evaluated at psi of t and then furthermore evaluated at psi prime of t. But now we just run through the same kind of game that we did before. So this is gonna be the integral from one to two of, so omega evaluated at psi of t. So we're gonna have five t minus five quantity squared so let's see, we've got 5t minus 5 quantity squared, and then we have dx, that elementary differential one form, evaluating on the derivative of psi, so that's just 5, and then finally we have dt at the end of that. Okay, so now notice that dx evaluated on that 5, that's just a determinant of a one by one matrix again, and so we'll have 5 times the integral from 1 to 2 of 5t minus 5 quantity squared dt. And now notice that we have this integral right here is equal to the integral of our differential one form, but our differential one form is equal to this integral right here. So that makes this integral from zero to five of t squared dt equal to five times this integral from one to two of the quantity 5t minus five squared. But via calculus one tricks, these guys are also just linked by a u substitution, which is 5t minus 5. So the moral of the story here is that u substitution from calculus 1 is really just integration of the same differential 1 form with a different parameterization of the interval of integration. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this board up, and then we're going to do a more general setup before we look at a next example. Okay, so like I said, we wanna look at a little bit more general of a setup. So let's say we've got a function phi that goes from the interval a, b to the interval phi of a comma phi of b. We have a differential one form on R1, which we'll call omega, which is f of x dx. Now we wanna integrate this differential one form over this space phi of a to phi of b two different ways with the trivial parameterization and then with the phi parameterization. So let's just do it with the trivial parameterization first. So that means we're integrating over this one dimensional space inside of R1 given by this interval of omega, but following the steps from before via the trivial parameterization, it's not too hard to see that this is just the normal single integral from phi of a to phi of b of f of x dx. Good. Now let's go ahead and do the phi parameterization instead of the trivial parameterization. So again, it's still integrating this one form over this interval phi of a, phi of b. So we still have the integral of that one form omega, but now that is going to be the integral over a to b of omega evaluated at phi of t and then further evaluated at phi prime of t dt. So again, that's using kind of the definition that we have over here for an integral of an m form on Rn. Great, now this evaluation here means that everywhere we see x, we need to plug in phi of t. So that means we're gonna have the integral from a to b of f evaluated at phi of t. And then this evaluation here means we need to have dx evaluating on phi prime of t 
dt. But again, this elementary one form acting on this is just like taking the determinant of a one by one matrix. So that's gonna give us the integral from a to b of f evaluated at phi of t times phi prime of t dt. But now if we look at this extreme right-hand side of the equation and this part of the left-hand side of the equation, this is exactly the change of variables formula from calculus one. And what linked these two into the same kind of idea was this integral of this differential one form over R1. Okay, so I think this is good to see. Let's go ahead and clean this up and we'll do a more interesting example. To finish this video out, we're gonna evaluate a calculus two integral by writing it as an integral of a differential one form on R1 and then reparametrizing the domain of integration. So we're going to integrate the function one over the square root of one minus x squared from zero to one. So like I said, we wanna envision this as a differential one form. So that differential one form will be omega, which is one over the square root of one minus x squared dx. And then our space that we're integrating it over is zero one. And so what we really wanna do is reparametrize the space zero to one so that we can simplify this integral. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can reparametrize the space zero to one in the following way. We can define phi, which goes from zero to pi over two down to zero to one by letting phi of t equal sine t. Great. But we know we're going to need the derivative too, so let's go ahead and write phi prime of t is equal to cosine t. Great. And now what we can do is take our goal integral and rewrite our goal integral as the integral of the differential one form omega, which is defined up there, over the interval zero to one. And now, using what we've done in the past, we can rewrite this with the new parameterization as the integral from zero to pi over two of omega being evaluated on phi of t and then evaluated at the derivative of phi of t dt. Okay, good. But now notice that's gonna be equal to the integral from zero to pi over two. We've got omega evaluated at phi of t. That means everywhere we plug x, we're gonna plug phi of t, which is sine of t. So we've got one over the square root of one minus sine squared t. And then we have dx, which is this elementary one form attached to omega. That's gonna be evaluating on the derivative of phi of t. So that's phi prime of t, but the derivative of sine is cosine. And then finally we have dt. But then the elementary one form dx evaluated at cosine, that's just taking the determinant of a one by one matrix. So that's just gonna give us cosine. So we've got the integral from zero to pi over two of cosine t on the top. But now by some trig identities, the denominator is also cosine of t, dt. So we just have the integral from zero to pi over two of dt. In other words, we have pi over two. So while this is a standard integral from calculus two, I think rewriting it using the language of integrals of differential one forms on R1 allows us to see that it's really connected to a much deeper idea. Okay, so in a following video, we're gonna do the same kind of thing, but with the change of variables formula in R2. Okay, this is a good place to stop.